Okay, hello guys, welcome to the channel. Uh, something weird really happened with this camera, the Sony a7 III. I've had it for about, I think about five, six months now, and it's never overheated on me, but I think I was recording and charging the camera at the same time, and this is the first time it's overheated. Bearing in mind, actually, I did leave it on for like a good 30 minutes before I actually went to sh shoot this video because I was doing some other things and forgot I left it on, so it could be that. Um, so, yeah. That's one thing that I dislike about the camera, that I finally just figured out. So everything else I do like. But that's not why we're here, that's not what we're here to talk about today. I want to talk about this guy right here. This is the Sony 85mm f1.8 um, lens. It is a very good lens and I'm just going to talk about why you should consider buying this if you're new to Sony and pretty much uh, show you some stuff so show you some pictures and maybe some video as well if I've got anything to show and just show you how good this lens actually is versus like the Sony uh, f1.4 G Master lenses uh, the 85 1.4 and I've used that lens I've compared it to this this is actually sharper this is just a, a hair sharper f1.4 will give you really nice bokeh circular bokeh whereas this gives you cat cat's eye bokeh but really, I actually kind of like that. And yeah, that's pretty much the only difference. The F1.4 G Master has a declipped aperture ring here. And a lot of people say that's actually really annoying anyway. So I'm going to talk about why this is a better buy. And pretty much, yeah, let's just get into it. So the lens in itself is fairly small compared to the G Master. Uh, it's a little bit heavy, but it's a lot lighter than most other 85mm that you'll get. It's got quite a nice glass element at the front there. Um, it's quite big, it's juicy, it's nice. And then you have a convex um, glass piece through the back there. Hello. It's very nice. All metal construction, aluminium I believe. And it comes with a little uh, hood here as well to stop any sun rays and stray light getting in. And then it becomes quite a big lens. So the camera that I'm using is the Sony a7 III. It is a beast of a camera. It's apparently an entry level camera, but it was much better than the pro cameras that I've been using uh, prior to this. So let's just dive into the, the video. I do want to show you some pictures first before we do anything. Right, so this uh, photo is just one that we were testing basically IEF with the 85mm to see um, how good it was if your subject wasn't really looking at the camera and it's you can see it's pretty much nailed my eye perfectly there and you can see how thin the line of focus is like just across here because this eye is out of focus and there's your bokeh this was really just to showcase how nice the bokeh is like you do get circular bokeh towards the center of the lens but out here yeah it's more cat's eye but a lot of people don't mind that I don't mind it I think it adds some really nice um, elements to your your overall composition so that was just one of me for from a side on perspective i do have a couple that i really like and um, that i will show just to showcase how sharp this is shot at f 1.8 and then um, you can see just how sharp like the eyebrows and the eye is the eyes tack sharp this one's a little bit out of focus just because her head was a little bit tilted but you can't see that from this far away really beautiful the background is just smooth this is it straight out of camera on the left. So you can see that I've just changed the white balance, added a little bit of contrast. Uh, straight out of camera, you're still getting very, very sharp results. You can go even go one further and go right in. So you can see the tiniest amount of chromatic aberration. It's a little bit of purple fringing happening. Um, you don't really notice that unless you pixel peep. And it is completely eradicated at f 2.8 which I will show you a picture of right now. So uh, this was some headshots that I was doing a couple of weeks ago. Changed it, but just even to show you the JPEG, how sharp that is. Um, like this is us zoomed in at like, what, 200%? And it's just, it's so good. This is a JPEG as well. Like look how sharp the eyebrows are. You can see every pore in the skin. And this is at f2.8 as well so your background is really really nice still really buttery f2.8 is all you need shot at iso 50 it was a really bright day uh, 1 to 50th of a second those are like my go-to sort of um settings always shoot manual 
as well. So let's just see if there's any other little ones I can show you. Uh, yeah, I just really want to showcase how good it is at catching the eye, like show you the before and after. Just subtle changes, nothing too crazy, you know, but just so sharp, man. Just horribly sharp. Yeah, so just like, you can see every detail. It's just so good. This is the F1.8. Um, sometimes you see a lot of chromatic aberration, sometimes you don't. It just depends how much contrast you're shooting in front of, but that's for another video. Uh, yeah, beautiful bokeh, really nice background. You know, it says it on the tin. It's just really, really good. Um, so what I want to talk about now is I'll show you a little bit of video just to show you bokeh specifically I have a couple of videos of like Christmas trees that I was shooting and um, just to show you how well that actually looks um, And it shows you how the bokeh works. So in this little video you'll see that the towards the edges of the The glass of the frame you'll see that you get cat's eye bokeh and then towards the middle you get perfect circular bokeh So really depends what you're shooting I really don't mind it. Compared to the G Master, you get mostly circular bokeh even at the edges, which is what it's it's known for. That's what you pay the extra one thousand pounds for. Really, you don't need it. Um, so it has a button on the side here. You can choose between autofocus and manual focus. I think it is electronic focusing. Uh, so a lot of filmmakers may not like that. Uh, it's not focused by wire, so it's just purely electronic. I haven't had any issues with it and I shoot film as well. Um, I have done a couple of videos with it and I really, really do like the... It's sort of really good for interviews, uh, so you can actually be quite far away from, from, from your subject, but actually still produce a really beautiful image and still be actually intimate and close enough uh, as much as you need to be. You can program this button to be anything. Currently, I think I have it programmed to be IAF just because it's much easier to hold and shoot and do that instead of having it on the, like the AEL button. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to quickly talk about the Sony a7 III camera. It is a beast of a camera compared to what Nikon and Canon are bringing out right now. Like there are some features that are better on like the Canon and Nikon, like 10 bit color on the Nikon and a higher megapixel on the Canon, but in reality, they don't have, for portraits, for what I use it for in video, this Sony blows them completely out of the water. It blows DSLRs out of the water as well because the autofocusing system, IEF, you can literally, within settings, have focus of the eye. That is the most important thing for me. It gets, it ticks all the boxes for me. And then in video, you've got Canon, which has a 1.74 times crop. Uh, when you use 4K, whereas this is a full frame readout, it's awesome. Cue my neighbours. Yeah, like, you have Nikon that's got a, a slight crop in 4K. It still has IBIS in body image stabilisation, which is kind of decent, but I can talk about this in another video. Um, this is just better for video. The Nikon does have 10 bit 4K, and that's good to some people. For me, I don't really mind. Um, so back to the lens. So I got this lens for four hundred and seventy pounds, which is really cheap. Um, I got it brand new, and it was through. I can't remember the website, but I'll link it right here, or I'll show you what it's called. Um, and it came really quickly, and it's awesome. It's quickly became my favourite lens. It is just so smooth and creamy and buttery and nice with your backgrounds and it is optically so good. So versus the G Master, so I got this for 470 pounds and I think that translates to about five or six hundred dollars, which versus the G Master, you'll be paying 1,400 pounds to 1,600 dollars, something like that. So this is so much value for money. Optically, they are pretty much the same. Um, there's a lot more glass in the f1.4, I'm not denying that, it is overall probably a little bit better, um, but this one is actually sharper.